What's happening, you bunch of psychopaths? It is your boy Wild Kyle back here with the highway, freshly back from Psycho Las Vegas. And let me tell you, I am a shell of a man. <laughs> we took the highway live for the first time, and uh, let me tell you, I was a little bit nervous. I'm not going to lie. You put a guitar on me, you put me in front of 50,000 people. I was born to do that shit. But, you know, grabbing a microphone and interviewing a bunch of people in front of a bunch of hungover festival attendees, well, that was a whole different story, but we all had a great time. I can't thank you all enough for coming out to check it out. In fact, we're going to have a whole Psycho Las Vegas recap for this episode, so I hope you're ready for it. And I do want to say thank you to all the guests uh, that braved the famous food stage with me this year. We had Joey Cook from Holy Wave, Jason Reese from Trail of Dead, Jillian Taylor from Ruby the Hatchet, Nick DeSalvo from Elder, Jarvis Leatherby from Sirith Ungle, Trey Pemberton from Creeping Death, some Texas boys, and uh, of course Chris Bishop from Crowbot. We all had a fantastic time, and I can't wait to do it again next year. That's right, we might be back. I'm starting the rumor now. I also want to give a special thank you to Idiot Box Effects, who does my signature distortion pedal, the Wild Kyle, and uh, two people got to win gold variants of those, of which there are only ten in the whole world. So... See what happens when you show up to my show? I give you things. Now, when you go to Vegas for a week, you sort of dip out of the real world and get lost in the uh, the bacchanalia that is Psycho Las Vegas. But when I did get home and fired up my phone, I realized that it must be intern week at the office because have you seen these headlines? That's not news. Oh, Lord, here's a good one. Ozzy once took so much acid he chatted with a horse for an hour. All right, man, I don't know who wrote this headline, but number one, Ozzy is the most fucked up dude in the whole world. Everybody knows that. Are you sober now? No, no, yeah, yeah. I, I'm never, but I, I'm always, uh, I'm turned Number two, it's clear that whoever wrote this has never done acid before, because if you just take five hits of acid, you can talk to the moon for a thousand years. And I gotta say, Ozzy probably doesn't need acid to have a conversation with a horse for an hour. That's not news, my friend. All right, now here's one that's not really news, but I, I, I do like it. Um, it's Iron Maiden artist designs benefit shirt for former vocalist Paul Diano. <laughs> benefit shirt. I love it. It's actually kind of a cool shirt. Uh, Derek Riggs, uh, the guy that created you know the, the iconic Eddie uh, mascot for Iron Maiden, uh, he put together a shirt called Axes High, and uh, the, all the, the proceeds benefit Paul Diano. He's been going through some hard times. I'm kind of one of those buttholes that's like, you know, I, I mean, I hate to be a guy that's like, I only like the first two albums or whatever, because certainly people do that to me all the time uh, with, with our band. But um, for my money, uh, Killers and the first Iron Maiden album are kind of my favorite. I love Bruce Dickinson. I love all those albums. But God, there's, there's something about the first two. They're just so gritty and punk and funky and different and innovative. And I absolutely love those first two Iron Maiden albums. Everybody go buy this Axis High shirt and uh, help out Paul Diano. Oh, oh, wait here. Well, we got some breaking news. This is happening live as I'm recording this, actually. Um, this is kind of a fun story. I've got a friend in Detroit uh, named Chris Brown who, at a sword show one time at St. Andrew's Hall, I uh, made everybody shut the fuck up so he could take a knee and propose to his girlfriend. And uh, it was a lovely night. And um, ever since then, we've been friends. He owns a comic book shop up in Detroit. And um, the the Third Man Records, uh, just today, as I'm recording this, uh, released their new version of Dope Smoker, uh, the sleep record on double uh, pot leaf infused vinyl. They have actual weed leaves visible in the record itself. And uh, there's only 300 of them in the world, and they can only sell them uh, in Michigan because it's legal there. And uh, the producer of the video element of the show, Austin Buchanan, uh, was dying for one. He lives in Florida, and there was no way he could... Um, you know, get to Detroit in time to 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 camp out outside of Third Man, which I guarantee you he would have done. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I, I I called in some favors. I did what I could from a dude, and uh, Chris just came through with a picture of this record. It looks absolutely beautiful, and um, uh, he's definitely not mailing it to Florida. Uh, yeah, because you you shouldn't you know put things like that in the mail. You know. <clears throat> Well, there's just a whole lot of actual news this week. God, I guess the joke's on me. And this was a fun one. <laughs> uh, Sammy Hagar and Eddie Van Halen collaborate on a new song in Sammy's dream. Ooh, that's fucking crazy. 
Now, this isn't the first time that I've heard Sammy Hagar talk about having a sort of sensitivity to the paranormal. Uh, he told this story about his father who um, he had a tumultuous relationship with. And uh, he said that one day when he was living in California, uh, he heard a knock at his door. And he hadn't seen his father in many years. And uh, he opened the door and his father was there. And he, his dad wanted to come in and talk. And Sammy just kind of blew him off. It was really late at night. He didn't know what he was doing there. And uh, kind of slammed the door in his face. The next morning, he got a phone call uh, from his brother or sister or something saying that uh, his father had passed away uh, the day before at a time you know, before that he supposedly showed up at Sammy's door. And uh, that kind of like gave me some chills uh, hearing that story. And uh, it was sad listening to Sammy tell it because he said that he just wished he would have let his dad in and talk to him for a little bit. Uh, but I guess we'll never know. But yeah, something's going on with Sammy. And uh, I hate to admit it, but I kind of want to hear the song. I'm not going to take any credit for some of these headlines being a little bit better than they used to be because uh, making fun of heavy metal journalism is uh, something that I really take a lot of passion in. But uh, this headline really grabbed me this week. I think it's fucking awesome. Uh, head to Duff's Brooklyn next week for a bloodbath listening party and blood drive. That's fucking cool. I love Duff's in Brooklyn. Uh, we used to party there all the time uh, back when it was on like 5th and Kent, I think, or, or something like that. Uh, the old location, we would go play the North Six, which is now the Music Hall of Williamsburg, and we would go party there into the wee hours of the morning. And uh, it has since moved uh, a little bit further away, um, kind of on the other side of Williamsburg. But I, I love Duff's. I love the bar. Uh, Jimmy Duff, he's, he's a cool motherfucker. He used to just, we used to hop in his hearse and drive around smoking dirt weed joints uh, all night long. And uh, I love Bloodbath, too. They're one, I think they're one of the best death metal bands out there. And the fact that they're having the listening party with a blood drive <laughs> in the bar is fucking ridiculous. Um, if you're in Brooklyn, go check this shit out. It's going to be awesome. Uh, I, I, I've got an advanced copy of the new Bloodbath album, and it is absolutely brutal, so um, be like me and go hear it first. All right, now that we're all caught up on this week's news, let's talk about last week's shenanigans at Psycho Las Vegas. I've got a huge list of all your burning questions here. We're going to go through them all. I cannot wait. Let's do things my way. The Highway. All right, first up, I just want to give a big old thank you to the whole Psycho Las Vegas team, especially Evan Hagen, for taking a chance on me, putting me on the stage, and uh, without a guitar, that was, uh, it took a lot of faith in me, and uh, it was nothing but love, and I can't tell you how happy I was with how everything came out. Uh, I showed up early for the, the Psycho Swim, and uh, that, that pool stage, we, we just all ended up calling it Punk Soup after a while, because there was, <laughs> there was a whole lot of beards, and vests, and moshing, and I don't think there's enough chlorine in the world to, uh, to cleanse us. But, you know, I will say that this festival truly is for absolute psychopaths only. They, they named it properly. And uh, for my money, if I, I know I was getting paid to be there, but I'm not getting paid to say this. If I was going to save up a bunch of money and take one trip a year and go see a giant festival with all kinds of crazy bands, you, you couldn't do any better than Psycho Las Vegas. Everything's like super compact in there, and whether or not the bands are having a good day or a bad day or the sound is amazing or terrible or whatever, it's just there's so much going on all the time. You, you almost can't keep up with it all. And uh, it's, a, it's a marathon. It's a marathon of a weekend, but it beats the hell out of standing out in the field, uh, getting beat down by the sun just for the chance to see your favorite band sound like ass. All right, we're going to dig into all your burning questions here. Uh, let's see. d Rec Glass wants to know, I'm going to put it here for the public to weigh in on, would it be possible to see Doomside of the Moon at Psycho Las Vegas? Ooh, that would be fun. That would be a real uh, psychotic endeavor. Uh, you know, like uh, if, for those of you that don't know, my Pink Floyd heavy metal uh, laser band, uh, Doomside of the Moon, it was a lot of fun uh, to to reimagine you know Pink Floyd songs as if they were done by Black Sabbath. I made the uh, the whole band dress in all white, with all white instruments and 
whited out the whole stage so we could do video and laser projection all over everything. It was um, basically an homage to the the silly you know Pink Floyd laser shows that I would go to when I was a kid, only with a live band playing the songs as if we were a heavy metal band. It was a lot of fun, and uh, I I do have plans to record some more music pretty soon here, so I don't know. Maybe Doomside of the Moon will make an appearance at Cycle Las Vegas. That would be fucking fun. And uh, somebody else, it looks like they piggybacked off this question. Uh, what are your favorite Pink Floyd songs to listen to? And which ones are your favorites to play? Uh, my my favorite one to play uh, was the Encore medley that we came up with. It was Have a Cigar into Pigs, three different ones, into Wish You Were Here. There's something about playing Wish You Were Here in front of a you know huge group of people that j- j- it just, yeah, you, yeah I, I get goosebumps. And you can tell everybody in the whole place is just got their hands in the air and I, there's something about playing songs like that that means so much to so many people that you can't help but uh just feel a little lighter than air when you're up there on stage but my favorite ones to listen to um or actually I don't I don't mean to to go too deep here or be you know be I only like the obscure records but I really loved the the two soundtracks that they did before Dark Side of the Moon uh, Metal and Obscured by Clouds uh, both of those records are two of my favorites and yeah I, I love them very much thanks for asking let's see uh uh, goddess of sick dreams says you've had a crazy couple of months uh, that's fucking true uh, did psycho help you decompress <laughs> yes it did i have had a crazy couple of months um I, i've been couch hopping on uh, jimmy vela's couch the drummer from the sword thank you jimmy for letting me crash with you uh i everyone i think might know by now that i, I typically live in an airstream travel trailer but it has been under repair for months and months and months, and it's been so much drama that I'm not going to bore you with, but I'm finally sitting in my home again for the first time since goddamn February, it feels like. Uh, it's good to be back. Thank you for asking. And yes, yeah, Psycho did help me decompress. Um, if anything, it, 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 it maybe recompressed me. I, <laughs> I I did party my ass off, but I held it together, and uh, I was. Just, I, I think I walked like straight up a million steps uh, from either end of the casino over the whole weekend. So uh, it, it was super fucking fun, and I'm I'm happy to be back. Although I will say that my social interaction meter is at one percent. I definitely need to recharge a little bit. All right, Death Cave wants to know. Oh, that's Mike, Mikey Freiberger. Hey, buddy, what's up? Uh, he wants to know who was the highest at Psycho. <laughs> I I don't know. Um, uh, geez, I mean, I, mm, during Elder's set, uh, their, their second set, uh, everybody in the doghouse uh, stage just started fucking blazing. And I know I got turnt, man. I, I, I was super fucking stoned. Uh, Elder is a little, a little more fun if you've had a puff. Uh, but man, you know what? Trey Pemberton, he actually might've been the highest at the whole fest from my boy from Creeping Death, man. He's awesome. And uh, that band fucking smokes more weed than just about anybody else out there. And so I'm going to say Creeping Death takes the cake for the highest at Psycho. All right, here we got my boy Big Kenny. Kenny Irwin, what's up, bro? Uh, He wants to know, any band you hadn't seen blow you away? Um, This is kind of a a twofold uh, answer because I had seen Boris before. uh, And they're incredibly loud, you know, the kind of atmospheric band i guess you could call them doom or whatever but they played the most absolutely brutal like thrash crossover set it i i couldn't believe what i was watching i just casually walked in to check them out and uh, not only were they the loudest band uh at psycho but i just had i didn't know they played like that i know they have like 50 albums i I am guilty of not keeping up with every single one of them but i i gotta tell you they just came out and destroyed everybody. It was the most aggressive, craziest set I'd ever seen. The whole floor of the sort of the ballroom where the the, the show was just started dipping. Like everybody, it, it felt like the floor was going to fall out. Is the most dangerous set of Psycho, and I I walked away from that just completely rocked. I I I couldn't believe it was something that I did not expect walking in there. Everybody, go check out Boris's thrash album. I guess they have a thrash album that was fucking sick. And uh, he also wants to know, uh, better time, main stage or pool stage? Uh, Those were two entirely different events. Uh, The pool stage was kind of like in the day club where, like I I talked about the punk soup earlier, 
uh, world. I mean, it was just you know, if you've ever seen a mosh pit in a swimming pool before, as you can imagine, it, it's just a chaotic good time. It was a little bit difficult to even get out there during. I, I mean, I didn't even get to see at the gates just because the, the chaos was in full effect during that whole time. But it was a fun way to take over a Las Vegas pool for a little while. And he also wants to know, uh, is there any food highlights? Because uh, my boy likes to eat. Um, yeah, I, I realized on day three that I had eaten exactly one piece of pizza and like a breakfast burrito. <laughs> and I, I was like, and also about 50 shots of whiskey. So I was, you know, thinking that maybe I should go treat myself to a nice uh, steak. So I went to that crazy baller steakhouse that they had. Uh, at the other end of the casino, and uh, it was absolutely lovely. I got an enormous ribeye and um, a pasta gratin, which is just rich people mac and cheese. Uh, it, was, it was a delicious steak. Uh, I had enough rosé to drown a horse, and uh, the coolest part of it all was they let me pick my own steak knife out of their vintage steak knife collection. It was some absolute Vegas shit. Um, it was th- the best meal I've had in a long time, and brother, did I pay for it. All right, MF Sabbath wants to know, which sets were highlights and which sets did you not make it to but wish you did? Um, For my money, Carcass is the fucking best death metal band out there. If anybody has heard the Bill Steer episode of The Highway, you know exactly what Carcass means to me. And uh, just any time they're playing, I don't care who else is on, I'm going to be at the Carcass show. But they put them on at the same time as King Woman, who I was really, really excited to see. But I know that King Woman's going to be around for a long time, and Jeff Walker might die tomorrow. So <laughs> I had to go check out Carcass. Next time King Woman's in town, I am not going to miss that show for anything because that new record of theirs is fucking amazing. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. That was that was what I said. But who who else was that? You know what was really fun? It wasn't a set necessarily, but before the Highway Live uh, on the second day, uh, Jizza did an event called Chess Boxing where he just shuts down motherfuckers in three minutes or less. And um, that was fucking crazy just to watch him just destroy everyone at chess. But he was 11 uh, to nothing when this eight-year-old savant like kid came on stage. He was like scratching his arm and shit. This kid's definitely on some kind of spectrum. But absolutely whooped Jizz's ass in front of everybody in less than three minutes. It was fucking so cool. And uh, there was a bunch of people saying, oh, I, no, he let him win. But nah, I don't know, man. That <laughs> That was some Bobby Fisher shit. All right, Kyle Bing Bong Bing Bong wants to know which night was the most depraved. It was all kind of one big blur when you don't go outside for four days. It just all becomes one thing. I didn't get a whole lot of sleep, but the most difficult thing about it was that I couldn't take 10 steps in any direction without seeing somebody that I haven't seen in five years. And I, it got to the point where I would say goodnight because I knew I had to go, and then I would see somebody else. And I would say goodnight, and then I would see somebody else, and it would just just turn into this rolling party train where eventually, you know, when it's 6 in the morning, you're like, I gotta go to bed, I gotta show in the morning, y'all. But I think Friday night was probably the the craziest one, just because everybody still had so much energy. You know, but by Sunday, everybody's a zombie. And uh, the the coolest thing about this festival, though, is that, you know, the Monday morning when everybody wakes up and is checking out of the hotel, um, everyone was all smiles. It, I, I've never seen such happy festival attendees uh, on, on the on the day after the whole thing's over, getting ready to go home. And uh, you just know that everybody's going to be back next year. It was so much fun. All right, my boy Austin wants to know, what was it like doing the podcast live, and will you be doing it again? It was really fun, you know? I, I It's not the first time I've attempted some sort of stand-up, I guess you could call it, um, but it was the first time that I've sort of been the MC of a panel of musicians And it it was so much fun. Uh, I really enjoy having a a different, like a mixed group of uh, musicians on stage because every band does everything differently. Uh, Yeah, nobody does anything the same way and everybody has a a different crazy collection of stories that is, you know, it's my job to just kind of steer the conversation and to pull these out because people love hearing about that kind of shit. It's just really hard uh, for a band to just, you know, talk about all this shit all the time uh, unless you just you know are the kind of person with a talking problem like me and so uh, and and some of the crowd too really didn't know what to expect i, I talked to some people that thought that i was going to do some sort of all-star jam or something that it was it was really cool um was just sort of getting the podcast's name out there and and do, just doing the damn thing in front of people um some people were hoping that i would record it you know, and it would be a thing, and uh, I, I gotta say, it's, that's why it's the highway live, you know, we're gonna do it all on stage, and uh, I didn't want 
any added pressure uh, on the guests uh, just because sometimes when something is recording, you kind of clam up a little bit or you don't tell the whole story. But when it's just live and it's just all of us having fun and nobody has their phones out recording it, that's when the real stories start to come out. And so if you want to hear the whole story, you got to come see The Highway Live. But I will say that next year, uh, well, I'll pause for that just one second. I will say that I really wanted to go live uh, during the festival uh, at, at times and just sort of like do some coverage, but I didn't take into account that you're not allowed to film on the casino floor. I got yelled at by a craps dealer. I got, <laughs> so the best I could do was uh, send little clips of uh, all, all the favorite shows that I attended. And uh, yeah, that, that was a lot of fun. But next year, uh, if I do come back to Cycle Las Vegas, uh, we're going to set up um, kind of a mobile recording station where I can rip some actual recorded interviews and we're also going to do some live shows. Oh, again, this is all rumors, but uh, I've got plans. Big, big plans. All right, Alex from We Know wants to know who were your highlights of the fest. Um, yeah, a lot of people want to know that. And, you know, it's funny uh, that you ask me that question every time you're going to get a different answer because my answer this time uh, was... Bone Thugs and Harmony. Oh my God. I've been waiting 29 years to see Bone Thugs. When I was in the sixth grade, I think it was 1994, uh, that's when Creeping on a Come Up came out on cassette and I got it. I don't know how I got my hands on a copy of that, but um, that, that was the one with uh, Thuggish Ruggish Bone and For the Love of Money. And I just, I love that shit. Um, years before Crossroads even came out. And uh, it, was, it was so, so good to see them play. I, 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 I know all about you know their their story about how they came from Cleveland and got on a Greyhound to uh, L.A. and just s- stood outside of Easy E's uh, recording studio waiting for him to give them a shot. And uh, their whole story is, is like a just rags to riches kind of crazy thing. And uh, just their you know hip hop shows, well any kind of show really you know can be hit or miss. But man, they brought the fucking pain. It was so goddamn good. You could tell everybody in there was so stoked because you know we had just come from seeing yeah I don't know like Rotting Christ and shit. You know we just all wanted to just get thugged out and see some fucking bone and uh it, the the highlight of the whole show for me was uh, whenever it was time to play crossroads you knew it was coming you know because it was getting toward the end of their set and uh busy bone i think it was got on the mic and just said everybody turn every fucking light off in this whole place and uh they they turned the stage lights down and he's like no off i want it completely pitch black in here which if you saw that huge tent stage it was already pretty dark in there so they turned off all the stage lights they turned off like every light in the whole place i mean it was damn near pitch black in there and then he said everybody i want to get your phone lights out and i want you to bring up a picture of somebody you miss and everybody held up their phones and there was so much weed smoke and shit in the room and everything and it was pitch black everybody's phone light just created this really soft glow uh over the crowd it was it was beautiful and they they did crossroads in the pitch black with everybody's phone lights out not a single person was recording it even if you did record you couldn't see shit um, it was it was super moving. I waited so long to see that, and they delivered more than I could ever ask for. Fucking bone thugs, y'all. If you ever get a chance to see them, go check it out. All right, Diary of Doom wants to know, were there any encounters with some vicious B.O.? Uh, no. This year, everybody was super clean. I was jam-packed in elevators with so many people, and uh, I guess that's kind of a one of the good things about a festival uh, at a place where your room is uh, you know, a two-minute elevator right away is that uh, you can go take a shower every night if you want to. Or or at least uh, anybody that smelled really bad, the, the punk soup uh, chlorine levels uh, took care of all that. So, no, man, it was, uh, it, was, it was a good, clean fun this year. Okay, Holden Mullins wants to know, general question, well, what's your favorite metal subgenre to watch live, and why? Uh, that's a good question, I, I suppose. Um, I, I'm a, a, a big fan of the technical death metal. Uh, if I'm gonna watch that, like a like we're just talking about Carcass earlier, um, they they just play those riffs so fast and so perfectly. I, I was just thinking, like, wow, is that what uh, being a vegan for 40 years can do to you? <laughs> if so, then I need to change my diet. Yo, and Valdor the Great wants to know: Are you joining Church of the Cosmic Skull? Uh, I wish I would jam with them for a minute. I already own uh, all the white clothes uh, from my Doom Side of the Moon uh, project, so. <laughs> I already hopped on stage with Great Electric Quest to play a guest guitar solo. If the church ever wanted me to, uh, to to become a member just for a day, I think that would be a lot of fun. Uh, they were super sweet people. And uh, this kind of rolls into the this next question, it looks like. Uh, Dark in the Sky wants to know, audio engineering disasters were abound all weekend. Uh, some bands in the event center sounded horrific, while the next band sounded great, such as Warpaint and Merciful Fate. 
Do some acts bring their own audio engineer to festivals? Uh, that's that's a really good question. I, I guess people don't really think about this all the time. Um, and it, every, like I said earlier, every band does things differently. So some bands fly in with a whole crew. Some bands just fly in by themselves and use the you know the studio, or I'm um, sorry, not studio, the, the festival people. Uh, some bands you know are on tour with their own crews and and things like that so uh it's it's you just never know you know every soundboard is different every situation is different and and sort of when you're at a festival you're at a time crunch you know like last year the the swords set was uh, a little bass heavy uh to say the least uh, up front so you just something when, when you have a throw and go like that you know you just you just gotta roll with the punches and you can either get really upset about it or you could just rock the fuck out and just have as much fun as possible on stage um it's 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 a that's a tough question to answer you know i will say like you know like during some band sets like what can happen is like let's say there's a problem with the singer's vocals like they're not coming through but the band has already started the show and you can't hear anything so the, the engineer sometimes just keeps turning the vocal up and up and up and up and that's not the problem. You know, it's like there's some clear issue that's not the levels, but they just don't turn the level back down before they find out what the issue is. So when the vocal does kick in, it's like, you know, and it just like, kind of destroys everybody's good time. Um, that or the sound check can just drag on and on and on and on. And you just like you're, you're 30 minutes into a band set and you're still checking the, the levels. Um, it just, it, it kind of turns into like a disaster. And especially if you're, you know, on a, a three day uh, bender and, uh, you, you've been on tour for a while and, and maybe your engineer just has no idea how this board works, or maybe they should have used the house people. I don't know. You know, it's just, it's, it's really, that's a hard question to answer because every band has a different answer for it. But, um, you know, that's just, just the, uh, the caveat of playing a festival. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, but at the end of the day, we're all just trying to have a good time up there. All right. White Bridge Furniture wants to know thoughts on the Pantera revival. Uh, we, we talked about this on the metal panel uh, on Sunday uh, that uh, when I had Jarvis from Sierra Thungle and, and Trey from Creeping Death and, and Chris uh, Bishop from Crowbot, uh, I wanted to talk about more metal things. And, uh, you know, while you're going to have to come see the highway live, if you want to you see uh, all the things that we talked about, I will say that I, I found out how many zeros are at the end of the, <laughs> the check that they're asking for. And, uh, you know, they can do what they want. I don't care. If I happen to see it at a festival, great. But with the amount of money that they're asking for, I couldn't see them playing more than, like, five of the biggest, like, European metal festivals uh, around the world. And, you know whatever man I, I hope they have a good time i hope everybody that cares that goes out to see the shows gets rocked um i got to see pantera back in the day so i'm you know not necessarily like uh chomping at the bit to go see these guys but whatever i hope everybody has fun let's see little boff wants to know she says uh, great performances all weekend especially bombers warthog carcass tribulation and of course merciful fate they were fucking sick um, so my question is, uh, what was up with that state of the art theater that wasn't being used that we all walked past on the way to the main stage? Uh, I don't know. It was, I, I don't know what kind of theater it was, you know, to, it might've been seated or something like that. And they did, they didn't want a bunch of Heshers in there just like jumping on the seats and tearing the place up. Um, there was definitely a bit of, mm, I, I wouldn't say miscommunication, but I, I don't think that the casino really understood what they were getting uh, their you know their hands involved with whenever they signed up for the festival because when everybody just started blazing during elder set or when everybody started moshing in the pool or whenever the dwarves had go-go dancers with flaming tassels on their boobs like you know inside the building it was you could tell that they had no idea what they had signed up for and uh, it was uh, it was dangerous it was fun and uh, we were all just laughing at them the whole time but i guarantee you they are not going to let us in their state of the art theater <laughs> so that's what was up with that and uh, another funny thing too was uh, the crazy posh like nightclub uh, in the casino that like people from all over were just like lining up for hours and hours to get into i don't know what was going on in there but i can't imagine it was worth waiting in that line for thanks so much for turning in your questions y'all i fucking love answering all your burning questions for this show uh especially when i'm your, your feet on the ground at, at things like this um i, I did want to talk about uh, merciful fate set real quick because uh a little a little road story for you uh i, I do 
tell this one live sometimes, but um, I, I think a lot of the reason that back in the day when we were on tour with Metallica, uh, a lot of the reason that I think that they liked us so much was because they saw something of themselves in us. And uh, we never really, you know, punished them, you know, with uh, just asking, well, what kind of guitars do you have? Or, you know, what did, what pedals did you use on Master of Puppets or anything like that? We, we just talk about, you know, like cars and butts and stuff. And uh, but every once in a while, you know, um, they would, you know, bring up music or we, or we would talk about it or something. And one time Hetfield asked me uh, some of the bands that uh, made us want to start the sword. And I was saying, you know, like the bands like Melvin's or Carp and Sleep and things like that, uh, you know, back in the early 2000s were like a huge influence on us and um, our, our musical approach. And I, I asked him the same thing. And he told me that if it wasn't for Merciful Fates, Nuns Have No Fun EP, that uh, Metallica wouldn't be a band. And that kind of fucking blew my mind at the time because I was I was never the biggest Merciful Fate fan, honestly. Um, you know, it's kind of one of those things where, you know, like I respect Venom for, you know, everything that they brought you know, to the table and everything that's come after that, but I was never the biggest fan. Um, I know I just lost like 27 metal points, but that's fine. I can live with that. But um, but I had to go see Merciful Fate. It was a, it was a big deal. And, you know, just it, it was it was so funny to me thinking like there's a band like Bone Thugs that sold, you know, millions and millions of records. And there was probably like 5,000 people watching them. But, you know, Merciful Fate, this like real niche, you know, Danish fucking extreme metal band plays. And there's the packed out like 8,000 people there. It was it was fucking awesome. And they were so much more brutal than I expected. They had like this old school kind of 80s stage set up with like stairs. They were just running around all over the place. Uh, King Diamond was in fucking top form. And I think my favorite part of the whole fest was uh, they, they played this brand new song, which was absolutely devastating. Uh, I cannot wait for a, a new record to come out. Uh, after it was over, everyone in the whole place was just screaming and going crazy, and King Diamond just stopped and goes, man, this is awesome. <laughs> it, was, it was great. Uh, you could tell, even though they were trying to you know portray this super evil image, uh, they, they couldn't help but just smile and, and soak it all in. It was absolutely awesome. And Psycho's come and psychos go but the real psychos stick around for the psycho classics golf tournament on the monday after the festival because uh i, I call it the cleanse you know i was never really a, a golfer before uh you know uh, and in fact last year i got invited to the golf tournament and uh, i'm the kind of person that just says yes to things and i just figured out later and uh, a friend of mine had given me a hit of acid and i was like you know what i'm gonna fucking trip on acid out there on the fucking bally high pga rated golf course and just, just see how <laughs> see how bad i am at golf uh i i did it and you know it wasn't i i was far uh, from the worst player out there and uh, i actually ended up having a really good time and um, uh, so much fun that a friend of mine back here in Austin uh, heard about that and uh, gifted me with a set of refurbished golf clubs uh, that, that uh, he does as, as his little side hustle. And uh, so now I own golf clubs, and I, I guess I'm a golfer. Uh, the Swords front of house and uh, tour manager, Buddy Hatcher, um, me and him hit the links uh, kind of over here where I'm living now uh, in Austin on a little nine-hole course back when it was like 104 and, and it was fun. We had a good time. But I was like, maybe we should wait until November, you know, uh, <laughs> when it cools off a little bit. But uh, out at the Las Vegas National Golf Club uh, this year for the Psycho Classics, it was 110 out there. It was absolutely brutal. I call it the cleanse. We were all out there just sweating out the sin from the last four days. And uh, uh, I, I had a fucking great time again. It was the club uh, where the Rat Pack used to play. Uh, back in the day and uh, the bar in the clubhouse uh, at the end of it had a little plaque at each bar stool where each of the the Rat Pack members uh, sat like Frank at the end of the bar Dean Martin Sammy Davis Jr. they actually had the piano that Sammy Davis Jr. used to play and entertain people with uh, still in the clubhouse it was fucking crazy and uh, if you've ever seen the movie Casino uh, it was the golf course where uh, that was filmed and actually the, the big pink casino house uh, was right around the bend of like the 12th hole or something like that. It was really fucking cool to be out there uh, just uh, knocking some balls around. Um, and uh, one of the fun parts of it was uh, this year for the activations, which means like I, every four holes, uh, they had a semi-pro golfer out there that you could tip to sail a drive for you if you wanted. And so you know, the the first one I came to was this girl. Uh, she was in college. She's you know trying to go pro. Uh, and uh, I, I gave her five bucks to uh, to sail a drive for me, and I have fucking never seen anybody hit a golf ball that far. It was fucking crazy. And uh, then so we play a few more holes and come back around the bend, and she's gone. And, and uh, I asked uh, Tyler, my boy, 
uh, who uh, organized the whole golf tournament. I said, oh, Tyler, she just she take off? And he, he said that uh, they're not used to people that party as hard as we do. And she was trying to keep up, I guess, with all of us psychos. And she ended up puking and having to get sent home <laughs> from the golf course. So be careful when you party with us, y'all. Uh, it's not a contest. Uh, hydrate. Don't dihydrate. And uh, yeah, but uh, we, we knocked him around. It was uh, super fun. And we all went back. Uh, for the after party at Sapphire, which is uh, the world's largest strip club. And uh, the first thing I did when I walked in was um, get attacked by these two honeys. And uh, I wasn't ready to, you know, party yet. I, I, I just got there and I was telling them, you know, no, I'm going to I'm gonna check out the club. And uh, they asked if I wanted to go on a tour. So, you know, like I said, I'm not the kind of person to say no. So, uh, you know, arm in arm, they took me all around the whole club. There's a fucking swimming pool in there. It's ridiculous it, it's kind of i mean it's the opposite of punk soup i guess uh but it, 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 i've never seen anything like it and uh, there's a, a karaoke bar in there there's a whole venue where bands can play too and uh Jizza was uh, performing uh, at the after party uh where there was an open bar it was absolutely lavish over the top but i was so partied out by that point uh i felt like slurms mckenzie uh hiding behind my sunglasses uh, inside at night and uh, i uh said my goodbyes to the psycho crew said my thank yous uh, to Evan and everybody, uh, Remy, Ronnie, Sam, fucking uh, Jeanette, everybody that fucking helped out the whole weekend. Thank you all so much. Psycho is is the best fest. I, I'm sorry, it's true. Um, and you know what? Uh, I'm gonna be back next year. We're gonna have a fucking great time. Uh, I can't thank you all enough for coming. It was it was so much fun. If you were there, you know it was fun. If you weren't there, you gotta come next year. It's the best fest. That's it for my Psycho Las Vegas recap. Thank you all so much for turning in your questions, for checking out the show. If you want, you can find us on Patreon at patreon.com slash the highway. A few bucks a month really means a lot uh, to help keep this show going. This is all a passion project for me, and uh, you've all shown me so much love that I'm just going to keep going until you all tell me to stop. And if you could do me a solid like, follow, subscribe, all that dumb stuff, uh, it really helps the show out. Uh, my boy Austin... Works really hard on the video element of the show on YouTube, so head over there if you want to uh, get a little extra silly. Uh, we, we all have a good time, and we're just doing this for fun. Um, I sincerely appreciate every single one of you for listening. Stay high, everybody. I'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in to The Highway with Kyle Shutt. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe if you want to keep up with the latest episodes. And don't forget to check out The Highway with Kyle Shutt playlist on Spotify to keep up with all the rad tunes that we play on the program. And if you need some new gear in your life, don't forget to check out Reverend Guitars, Railhammer Pickups, Idiot Box Effects, and Ray Ray Decker Cables. Stay high, everybody. We'll see you next week.